Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal, and today we're going to look at a woman who went to a safe and legal abortion clinic owned by a actually current criminal abortionist. Okay, Luis Barquet had moved to Miami from Cuba in 1961 and was promptly arrested for running a criminal abortion mill. The International Association of Chiefs of Police released a study describing Barquet, Barquet, not sure how to pronounce his name, as a butcher who ran a protected abortion syndicate. He was ordered to leave the U.S. in 1963, which he did, only to return a few days later. He was indicted in a bribery case in New York in 1965 and fled the state. He was captured in Miami Springs in 1966 while perpetrating illegal abortions in a motel. Barquette used this arrest to challenge Florida's 104-year-old abortion law and got a ruling in his favor in 1972. So that kind of sets the stage for safe and legal in Miami. So Barquette was a long time back alley abortionist who had no women's deaths that I could find in his criminal practice. This is the guy. So a young woman named Marina, 34 years old, went into Barquette's abortion facility at 620 Southwest 1st Street in Miami for a safe and legal abortion. She was about six to eight weeks pregnant on August 17, 1978. Um, she reportedly chose abortion because she feared her health problems had harmed the unborn baby. And she was a newlywed pregnant for the first time. Dr. Eduardo F. Elias, age 69, administered Valium and Xylocaine for the abortion. He was being assisted by Anna West Barquette, age 53, wife of the clinic's owner. He um, was in jail at the time, and we'll get to that. Uh, but she had already been arrested with him in the 1960s for helping him run a criminal abortion ring. 60 to 90 seconds after the procedure, Elias noticed that Marina was not breathing. He initiated CPR and Mrs. Barquette called Dr. Jose Suarez, the doctor who had referred Marina for the abortion. Marina's husband, Fernando, was waiting at Suarez's office. Somebody uh, summoned Miami Fire Department Rescue Squad. The ambulance found Marina with no signs of life. They attempted to resuscitate her, but as Miami Homicide Sergeant Gerald Green said, when they got there, she was too far gone. They transported her to Jackson Memorial Hospital where she was pronounced dead. Now, the medical examiner didn't attribute Marina's death directly to the abortion, that is the action to dislodge the fetus, but to an idiosyncratic reaction to the drugs that were administered for the abortion. And the abortion lobby is always very careful whenever um, it's not the actual physical act of removing the fetus that causes the injury. They go, well, it wasn't the abortion that caused it. Oh, yeah, like Marina was just going to walk in and say, hey, inject me with some medication just for fun. Don't, don't take the fetus out. You know, she'd have been fine if all they'd done was taken the fetus out and not incorporate medications into the treatment. Um, so... The office was supposedly clean and well-equipped for an abortion. Well, let's um, take Sergeant, Green word, Sergeant Green's words. The office was clean and it was well-equipped for an abortion that goes according to plan. But other than an airbag, there was no really no equipment if an emergency occurred. And I'm so used to hearing this. Safe legal abortion, she... Um, stops breathing for some reason, whether it's a reaction to the drugs, whether she has an asthma attack, whether she's hemorrhaging, you know, it doesn't matter why. If she stops breathing, they, they don't know what to do and they're not equipped to deal with it. So at the time of Marina's death, Barquette was serving a sentence for 10 years, 10 counts of unlawful practice of medicine, grand larceny, and illegal abortion. Uh, this was related to his arrest in 76 for operating an abortion clinic illegally and performing abortions without a license. Now notice he was doing this in 1976. So, you know, because 
Uh, Florida was really careful not to look closely at what goes on inside abortion clinics. Remember the see no evil attitude that the abortion lobby has. This guy was passing himself off as a doctor, openly operating a clinic and doing abortions in it. He was also charged with four counts of involuntary sexual battery for examinations he performed on women under the pretense that he was a doctor. Those charges carried a potential life sentence, but the attorneys countered he should have only been uh, charged with practicing medicine without a license because that was you know, the reason he was touching these women's sexual parts. Um, so Barquette's son continued to operate the clinic and evidently they hired Dr. Elias to perform the abortions. So th this is, he created the free for all and uh, this young woman died because they just did not know what to do when she stopped breathing. They weren't equipped for it. They never think it's gonna happen. And again, remember this is Florida where the Florida Abortion Council um, famously fought tooth and nail decade after decade against any kind of state oversight. I don't know how they managed to catch him because they had no right to go into the clinic unless somebody pointed it out to them.